Hi YouTube, AC Dodd here again, and this time we're looking at a standard 850 head rebuild. So, I have in the workshop an 850 cylinder to rebuild. Uh, this is it. Obviously it's been stripped down, but uh, I'm not going to show any of that on this video because uh, I've done a cylinder head rebuild video before uh, for, a, for, a, for a larger engine. So we're just going to get into some of the machining work that we need to do to actually uh, rebuild cylinder heads. Um, but I just thought I'd feature a nice standard one here rather than a modified one. So this is uh, an old uh, 2A629850 casting and uh, we've got it in for rebuild. So um, it's reasonably clean. Um, however, as usual with these things, all is not exactly as you would hope. So let's turn it over and have a look. So, I've already crack test this one. Again, in a previous video, I've shown how to do all that. So, we have a look through here. The first job for this cylinder head is to fit undated inserts. Now, this head, as we can see, that's a standard chamber, and the chamber's next to it in the middle, number uh, two and number three. Uh, we've already had an insert, and I've removed these inserts because when crack testing, I found that nasty crack right between those yellow lines, okay? Um, unfortunately, that's right where you don't want it when you're putting in inserts. So in this particular case, uh, I'm not going to be using this casting. Uh, and as with a lot of cases, when I do uh, 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 engine or head rebuilds for people, um, this particular casting is no longer suitable uh, and it's not worth fi uh, fixing or uh, having it welded etc so what we're going to do is swap the casting have a new one uh, or certainly a replacement one and we're going to machine that for the customer instead so from down my stores I've uh, looked another old uh, 850 stroke 9 and 8 casting so we are going to use this one um, so this just saves a lot of hassle uh, for the customer and uh, it's more reliable. So we'll have a look at the casting. First off, we can see this is in quite good condition. Uh, we've got some rust inside, so we'll be, we'll be uh, uh, processing that as part of the rebuild work. Um, obviously, original guides, uh, we're going to be replacing those. So let's turn the head over and see what we got. We've actually got a very nice deck on that one. Uh, and you can tell by the uh, planing lines where that's been machined, that's all factory machined, so that's never been skimmed. So it's an old cylinder head that's never never had a skim. And inside where I've decoked it, I'll just use a wire brush uh, on the end of a, a drill, rotary wire brush to, to clean my cylinder heads up. We can actually see that these chambers are in pretty good condition. The actual valve seats, well, they're not they're not such good condition, um, but we're going to be fitting unleaded inserts in there. As we can see, they're quite pitted, and that will repair that and obviously convert this cylinder head to unleaded. So first thing I'm going to do before I do any more to this head, I've already cleaned it. Um, is I'm going to go through and fit these valve seat inserts to the exhaust. Uh, thus converting uh, the cylinder head to unleaded fuel because at the moment there are no inserts that's just as it came from the factory um, and then we're going to do that and then, then then let it sit just to make sure we don't uh, have any cracks after doing that um, and then we're going to uh, continue with the machining so cylinder head set up on the milling machine so what we've got here is basically uh, the casting bolted down to the machine uh, what I've also done is I've set up a cutter, which is a piloted cutter to do the majority of the uh, stock removal for cutting out the insert um, recess. So we're going to go through. I've already set the machine up and centered on one, two, three and four. Uh, so what we're now going to do is rough cut that seat, insert seat recess out to uh, about... Um, 30 thou from the finished size and then we use the boring head to finish it off so we've got the cylinder head set up so what we're going to do is uh, cut a few recesses for you 
and then you can see the cutting process and how that progresses. And uh, with all good machine operations, I shall machine that on feed. So there's my hands. Machine's feeding that. So that's just feeding the quill down and cutting that valve seat to death. So we'll just move the table over now, uh, suck out the swarf, and then have a quick measure and see where we are. So let's just measure the depth. Check where we are. Yep, we're bang on. Let's move on to the next hole. Okay, so we're sent it up over uh, recess number three. So let's get that one machined. Again, using the feed. Clean out the swarf and check that one. So first off we'll check the diameter. I'm just using a, a dial caliper here, it gives me a rough reading. Uh, this one's coming bang on size at about 25 thou under the finish size. And then uh, we'll move on to checking the depth uh, with a depth mic. This is what I'm doing here. And uh, just looking that we're down at the 188, 189 thou nominal, which is the depth of the insert. And uh, all of these were spot on. So next we change the cutter for a boring head. And then we go back down and we just size each of these recesses to get the correct diameter and the correct depth ready to put the inserts in. So I've got the boring head set up over uh, the valve seat insert, uh, sorry, the valve seat recess. So now we're going to start boring that out. So what we do now, we're only going to do this in a couple of passes because that's nearly the right size. So it's taking about 10 thou out per pass. Um, so I'm just going to clean that out and then we'll have a, a measure. Come in with a gauge again and uh, just confirm that we're on size, which the machine is cutting perfectly. So uh, we'll just alter the boring head. 
take another cut. Okay, so that should be the finished size. So we'll get that checked. And then uh, once that one's done, we move on to the last hole. Okay, final cut, all completed on the last recess. So uh, let's get uh, that measured and let's get it off and let's get the inserts in. So, all done. Recesses, all bored. Right diameter and right depth. A lot of people ask me why I don't use a head centre. Well, I don't, use, I don't do enough heads for a head centre. Uh, and the beautiful thing about using a boring head on the milling machine is I've got complete adjustability on the size of the recesses and the accuracy is perfect. Uh, the diameters on those uh, vary by no more than two tenths of a thou. So yeah, uh, absolutely fantastic using this setup. Anyway, let's get this head off and get it over to get the inserts in. Okay, so I've got the head set up. Let's get the inserts in. So uh, first things first, a little bit of uh, ATF on the seat and a little bit on the recess. So we just run that around the inside. And the idea of that is just to uh, stop or help prevent galling. So once that's in, we just pop the seat in the right way up. Put the installation tool on and just drive it home. Just knock it down till it makes a different noise and then you know it's seated. And then you just rinse, wash, repeat. With all the other recesses and seats. Now, because these these inserts are all ground, they're all they're all within a tenth or so. So the the sizes are very very good. Um, so we don't have to worry about uh, you know matching them up because uh, the the tolerances are very tight and the recesses we bored are very tight as well. Simple as that. And if you're worried about driving these in, thinking. Oh, well, he's doing that wrong because what will happen is it will uh, slice out some material as it goes in. Um, I'm ahead of you there because I actually did a test uh, many years ago where I uh, installed these like this and then I pulled the seats out again and I actually measured the hole. And funnily enough, it hadn't changed and no material was removed when I inserted it. So I do know that when you get these sizes right, this works perfectly. The insert goes in and it doesn't come loose because it doesn't cleave any material out as it goes in, thus giving a nice reliable uh, mechanical fit. So last one going in there and what we're going to do once that's in is Leave the head. I'm actually going to put it in my de-rusting tank 
uh, to clean out the internal internal waterways um, and then once it comes out of there I can inspect it to make sure it's not cracked and then we can start the process of machining it all up and getting it ready for use anyway uh, as for part one that's it so join us in a uh, in a few weeks when we uh, look at part two thanks very much